What role does listening play in learning music? As you can imagine, it plays a huge role. I just had this question asked on a previous video, and it was, how do you listen to something to practice playing it? And I kind of want to go through a list of reasons why you should listen and how you should listen. And then I kind of want to bring ourselves to answer that specific question in the many ways that it can be answered. But let's just go through this little bit of list because it will help you identify what you're actually getting out of listening. The first is listening for enjoyment. And that really kind of just falls under just casual music listening. And in reality, there's no wrong answers here. Uh, but a couple things that you can think about if you're just listening for enjoyment, which is what mood does this put me in? What times do I like listening to this? And then even maybe categorizing the music that you like listening to. Maybe you start making playlists. If someone requests or you know says, hey, check out this song, you check it in a playlist. All right, but again, you do you, let's move on. Listening for enrichment. This is kind of the next step. This is what happens a lot of times if you take a music appreciation class. And here, I would challenge you, you just want to learn a little bit more about music while you listen. And there's a variety of different ways you can do this. You can listen to see what do you hear? What instruments do you hear? Are there drums? What type of genre is this in? Are you hearing fast notes? Are you hearing slow notes? Are they high? Are they low? Any contrast that you notice? All of these things can really help increase the enrichment that you get out of music and maybe even get you to like music that you not necessarily were inclined to like to begin with. Then we get into listening for learning. Now, I wanna break this into two different categories. Category number one is learning music entirely by ear. And this would be most appropriate when we're talking about pop music, jazz, sometimes, rock, blues, things that are more an aural tradition. We don't typically write them down. When you do that, let me just go into this briefly, and then if you want this broken down more, I'm happy to make another video about it because I feel like the way the question was asked in the previous video, I think it's more about the second way of learning music, but we'll get there in a second. Let's talk about listening entirely to learn music, entirely just on its own. We're gonna start out and we're gonna identify the baseline first. Again, you can do this a variety of ways, but I think listening for the baseline is really important as the first step. Why? Because that's going to be the thing that's foundational to determining what else is going on. And even a step before that is going to be identifying the key that you're in. But again, we can leave that for another day. <clears throat> you listen for that baseline. Once you identify a few notes there, then you listen for the melody. Once you identify a few notes there, then you can listen for those inner voicings, those extra chord notes. And generally speaking, if you know the melody, if you know the bass note, let's imagine it's a triad chord, you'll actually probably know all three notes then because you have two out of the three just with the melody and the bass note. And then you're like, but what if the melody is not part of the chord? Well, that gives you even more information. So no problems there. Let's briefly mention something, which is theory is actually really important for listening. If you lack expectations, you're going to have a very hard time learning music by purely listening or extracting as much as you can from the listening, even if you have a score. But let's get into that scenario because I think that's what this question's about. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And that is, what do you do when you have music in front of you? You know, you're studying a classical piece, you're studying jazz, you're studying maybe even a pop piece or a musical. You have this music in front of you. You know the music already, but you want to learn it more intensely. So you have the score. What you do is you study the score. And how do you study the score? You turn on the recording and you follow along with your eyes. Huge, 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 huge. Everyone should do this quite regularly, it is such a powerful way to learn it. Why is that so powerful? Because it's almost like you're practicing hearing what you want to hear when you see that score. 
and it can help draw out certain parts that you may have missed, you may have neglected just purely looking at it. If this is a piece that you're playing with other people, this as well can let you listen for the other parts that you don't necessarily play. But let's imagine again, we're kind of narrowing in, we're narrowing in with every step we take to a very specific problem so that we can give you a really good answer. And that is, what if you're playing a solo classical piano piece? You have the score, but you want to learn it even better. So you're gonna to listen to a recording. Well, the most obvious thing is you listen for the interpretation. When do they get loud? When do they get soft? When do they get faster? When do they get slower? How do they approach harder technical passages? All of these things will be extremely helpful to answer. But I want to end this video with my two favorite techniques for learning a piece using a recording practicing, I guess I should say, practicing a piece, not necessarily learning it. You may already know the notes. And that is listen, then play, or play along with the recording. So let's imagine you're learning, you know, a big etude or something, and you're like, okay, I really need to dive into this. Well, what you're gonna do, you're gonna find your favorite, most favorite recording. You're gonna listen to eight measures, then you're gonna play those eight measures. And then you're gonna kind of do a compare and contrast. You're like, well, you know, this part sounded good. Oh, I made a mistake here. Okay, fix that mistake. Okay, actually, I'm noticing that when I start this loud, then my dynamics don't actually work. So maybe I'm going to try to start quieter than the recording. And then you can even pick up and be like, you know, he slows down there. He or she slows down there in the recording, but I would actually like to speed up there. Then you can even make differences and variations. Super powerful. Listen, then play. Listen, then play. Listen, then play. The advantage of that is it allows you to play at a different speed and make different choices as you want to go. The disadvantage is, is it's actually quite time consuming because you have to listen to the recording then play. Although I'm not even sure that's necessarily a disadvantage. I think many times we try to save time when we practice and we ultimately actually seem to shortchange our practice sessions. So adding ourselves a little bit of extra time to listen is probably just going to slow us down and give us a better result. The other thing that works really, really well though as a practice technique with listening is playing along with the recording. This is so huge. And I think particularly classical musicians really worry about this because they almost feel like, oh, if I do this, then I'm gonna shortchange myself because I'm not gonna develop my own interpretation because I'm playing along with this recording. No, no, don't think about it that way. Think about it as I'm gonna model myself after the very best. And then when I take away that recording, I'm gonna allow myself to then experiment and fill in these extra detail places and make choices after that point. But I am telling you, you can get so far and so fast at a piece just by playing along with the recording and then making a mental note, be like, okay, I couldn't keep up there, turn the recording off, boom, that is exactly where to practice. I am telling you, it is such a good way to do things. I'm kind of been all over the place in this video, but hopefully this kind of is, acts as at least a little starting off place on how important listening is to the practicing learning music part and all the different elements and different ways that you can approach it. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe. It all super helps. I'm Robert Monroe. Until next time, see you later.